There is a viral claim making the rounds online that women shouldn't do cold plunges. And a big part of that narrative hinges on just one study from 2014, which uh, people are pointing to as su uh, supportive proof. Just let's stop and ask the real question. Does this study actually say that cold plunging is unsafe or ineffective for women? So the short answer is no. And the long answer is that we should go through the science properly. Here's what happens in the study. So the researchers submerged men and women in 10 degrees Celsius water for 170 minutes. That's nearly three hours. Let's start right there. This is not a cold plunge. This is a prolonged extreme cold exposure. And no one in the modern cold therapy space recommends anything remotely like that. I, I certainly don't hope so. And I for sure don't. So <laughs> what did they actually find? Both uh, men and women maintained actually their core temperature. They just defended it very differently. So men generated more internal heat through early shivering, relying on the metabolic thermogenesis, so heat production. Women delayed shivering, but relied more on peripheral vasoconstriction, so they constricted their blood vessels better and perceiving the heat by constricting these uh, blood flow to the limbs. So this wasn't about who was better at cold. It was about different systems responding in different uh, ways, but equally effective ways when you measure under metabolism. So crucially, both groups activated their metabolic systems. So, uh, similarly, that means that the beneficial physiological pathways we want in cold plunges like increased noradrenaline, metabolic activation, and anti-inflammatory responses occur in both the men and in the women. So let's look at what other researchers show in their uh, studies. So I, I want to go a little bit wider. So because this isn't the only study worth talking about, I think, but it's the one I think been, has been misunderstood. There's also a study by Ticusis et al. I don't know if I pronounce it right, sorry, but it's, it's from two, uh, the year 2000. This paper looked at men and women during immersion in cold water. And what they found was that when they matched for body fat and metabolic heat production, it was not significantly different between the genders. So what does this mean? The real factor influencing cold responses uh, wasn't gender, it was body composition, especially lean mass and surface area. So this is why generalizing by gender alone is a sloppy science, in my opinion. If you control by fitness and body type, the male-female cold response gap uh, actually shrinks dramatically. Here is another study by KQ from uh, 2018. This study found that women tend to initiate shivering at a higher skin temperature than men. So that's not a weakness. It's a different threshold, part of a distinct but functional thermoregulation strategy that is a little bit different in, in women compared to men. And again, it doesn't mean that they have worse outcomes, just different mechanics. There is also a study by Hutunen et al. from 2001. So this uh, is actually a big one, I think. It tracked frequent winter swimmers, both men and women, and showed that regular cold exposure had a reduced stress, stress hormones over time, an improved mood, and it boosted the immune function. Importantly, these benefits were seen across both genders, both men and women. So the takeaway, when adapted to cold, the body doesn't respond with more cortisol either. It responds with less so I think it's important to talk about the role of cortisol. What's really going on during cold water immersion? One of the bigger arguments online is also that cold plunges spike at cortisol uh, up through the roof and women are more sensitive to cortisol, so they shouldn't do cold plunges. Uh, that is also a misconception. So let's break that one down. Yes, the first time you jump into cold water, your body sees this as a threat and you will have a heart rate that spikes and adrenaline rises. Cortisol might even also have an increase, but very briefly. But here is what most people actually miss. Cortisol spike is very temporary and it decreases with regular exposure. 
So it's not about that it will continue, it's just in the beginning when you start your cold exposure journeys. Studies have shown that cold adaptation leads to the reduced baseline cortisol levels. That's why cold water immersion is increasingly used in therapies for, for example, anxiety, depression, PTSD. It helps train the nervous system to recover quickly from a stressor rather than stay stuck in a fight or flight system. Cortisol is not the enemy. Chronic, unregulated cortisol is. And cold plunging done right is a tool to regulate it. So the duration matters, actually not the gender. So here's the biggest context missing from all the online noise that we see out there. Duration changes everything. All these fears about women in cold water are based on long exposures, but the benefits of cold plunging happens very fast in the first two to three minutes when you're over the cold shock. So both for men and women. And that happens when noradrenaline spikes, the cold shock protein activates and anti-inflammatory responses begin at this stage and mood and clarity increases. After that, the risks, not the benefits, starts to increase. So you don't have to go longer than these few minutes at, um, than these few minutes. So this is true for everyone, regardless of gender. Whether you're male or female, long plunges are unnecessary. The sweet spot is cold water from 15 degrees Celsius, which is uh, 57 degrees Fahrenheit and below, one to three minutes at a top max. You don't have to go longer than that. You just have to do it regularly, not to the extremes. Why this misunderstanding matters? It's because this whole debate actually reveals a deeper issue. We are not taught to understand physiology, not really, and I think that's a problem. Human physiology is very complex. It's not black and white, it's not binary, it's systems within systems, and it's adaptable, it's resilient, and it has nuances. So that's why we need to understand it on a deeper level. We can't reduce these conversations to cold plunges is good for men and it's bad for women and because that's simply just lazy, I think. And this is exactly why I have created my school. So my school is the first uh, one in the world, actually, dedicated to contrast therapy. It's a structured science-backed methods that teaches practitioners how to use cold water as a therapy uh, and also heat, so the sauna and breath work to help people move from stressed out to regulated, from uh, fight and flight to rest and digest. So what I teach my students is the physiology behind these tools, how to adapt protocols to individuals, not just by gender, uh, but by cycle, phase, uh, stress state, lifestyle, how to create a safe, empowering experience for the clients. And I think this is very important if you're working with this professionally, especially if you are letting yourself being taught online. I think it is important to have a proper education, have proper understanding of what is going on, especially if you are taking care of clients doing this. My students leave with a framework that helps people not just survive the cold, but use it to feel better, sleep better, and live with more ease. And the best part is probably that uh, it's all science backed by real science, not trends, not hype, and definitely not fear-based narratives. But we will address them and we will talk about them, of course. So the next time you hear someone say women uh, shouldn't cope plunge, so just remember that that claim is based on a misread study that had people do cold plunges for three hours uh, short control cold exposure activates the same benefits in women as it does in men uh, when they just get over the cold shock, and that's enough. And understanding human physiology isn't about extremes, it's about context, adaptation, and individualization, actually. So if you want to learn more about how to safely use contrast therapy for your clients or for yourselves, go to my uh, school, it's on thermalist.com, to learn the thermalist method. You can do this as for yourself in a short course, or you can do this as a professional where I offer certifications also. If you found this video helpful, you can like and comment and you can subscribe so you will know next time I put out a video. 
we need more science and less fear on the wellness space online. So that is why I am making this video. Thank you for watching.